Hi, I'm Stacy, self-taught meal master, and this is my new mini series, Hot Grill Summer. You can't grill without a good steak. So we're gonna cook up some ribeye, we're gonna build a beautiful fruit salad next to it because fruit on the grill is nuts, and then wash it all down with a grilled pineapple sangria. <laughs> So let's get started. What I want to do is I want to make a marinade for my ribeyes. First of all, I pick ribeyes, king of steaks. I love them on a grill because it can take the high heat because of incredible marbling in the meat. That marbling is pretty much fat, but what happens is the fat melts down into the meat as it cooks, keeping it juicy and just full of flavor. It's like the king of steaks. This is what you want at a steakhouse, but we're bringing the steakhouse to your house. And I gotta give a shout out to Happy to Meet You for providing these amazing steaks. All right, so I love a marinade and I love a rub. Today we're gonna do a marinade. It does two things, of course it adds flavor, but a marinade is also going to help tenderize the meat as well as keep it juicy and moist. Because again, we're throwing this on a screaming hot grill, gonna sear it, cook it real fast to keep everything flavorful. So marinades should be simple. Always start with olive oil. So a good cup of olive oil. These are bone-in ribeyes, which I think are so impressive. If you're gonna have guests over, um, you do wanna spoil yourself, go with the bone-in. Um, and they just, again, provide a little bit more intense flavor than maybe your boneless. But boneless will work with this recipe too. Then some balsamic vinegar. Now the oil is gonna keep the meat moist while the vinegar with its acid is gonna tenderize the steak, so it's really gonna be nice, almost not quite like filet, but it's gonna get softer and have a wonderful mouthfeel. So that's a quarter cup of balsamic vinegar. And then I'm gonna let this sit for a second, and I'm gonna cut up some rosemary and garlic. Garlic, I usually like to just microplane. Um, gotta give a shout out to Rachel Ray, because honestly, she's the one who taught me I did not have to go ahead and chop garlic. I can just go ahead and do this, give it a little zip zip. You don't have to chop up garlic. No, you can just let the device do the work, unless it wants to stick, which sometimes it can. So one clove for that ribeye, another clove for the other ribeye. If you're doing four ribeyes, you're gonna need four cloves. It's a good arm workout too. For guys, it'll give you a reason to flex. Do this in front of your babe, Justin, and you can, or Brian, and you can just flex with them. Okay, so go ahead and do that. I love rosemary. A lot of times people use this as a finishing touch right before you take a steak off of a skillet if you're cooking it in the oven, but I think it works wonderful in this marinade. Hold your knife nice at the base of the head, not just the handle, you have better control. And then we're just gonna go over this and just chop it up a little bit. It's about a sprig of rosemary, really, is all you're going to need. A little salt and pepper over top. Now if you want to save yourself doing dishes, you can honestly throw this in a Ziploc gallon size bag, pour all of this, add your steaks, and give it a good smoosh. Is that a word? Smoosh? No. It is now? Nice. See, don't you love a crew that just agree agrees with you all the time? Even if you don't make sense, because that's normally me. And because the garlic kind of got um, uh, almost like really fine, like a paste. I'm just gonna take this and brush it over top so that garlic gets distributed. I like grating garlic more than chopping it because it melts, it like liquefies, it's so fine. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this into the refrigerator and let this marinate at least an hour before cooking, um, up to four hours, but not too much longer after that because it's really not gonna do anything more for your meat. Okay, so that's marinating, now let's prep our nectarines or peaches for the fruit salad. It's basically a nectarine or peach, whatever you can find at the farmer's market or in the grocery store, with blue cheese, basil, and pine nuts with a little drizzle of pomegranate molasses or honey. It's awesome. So I grabbed a couple of basil leaves and get a knife, and we're just going to go ahead and julienne these 
Easiest way to do that is stack your basil leaves like this and then you're kind of roll them like a cigar. And you're gonna come in and you're just going to rock back and forth and you'll get nice strips. So this will look really pretty, the green on top of the nectarines or peaches. My only call out with nectarines or peaches, again, doesn't matter which you use. Um, you want them a little underripe, so um, they just have a prettier, smooth, clean cut. Um, and you also should choose the yellow versus the white peaches or nectarine. Just again, it's all aesthetics. It's, they'll taste perfectly fine and delicious if you did white. So here are my nectarines. Of course, um, I bought these a couple days ago and um, some of them ripened till I got together to shoot this video, but that's okay. It's still gonna taste the same. See if they're a little underripe, see what I'm talking about? That little smoother cut, as opposed to when they start getting super ripe, um, it just doesn't look as pretty, but sometimes who cares about the way the food looks? how it tastes. Okay, so you want to take your nectarines, cut them in half, remove the pits, which is what I've done here. And then basically we're going to prep these and have them ready to go for the grill. And all we're going to do is take some olive oil and do that over top. We're going to pop these on a grill about medium to medium high heat and literally face down for just a couple of minutes. We're going to um, give these a nice, wonderful, char, get them caramelized, golden brown, super delicious. It took me forever till I started really um, using fruit on the grill. And I was like, why did I wait so long? Grilled pineapple for sangria, it's absolutely delicious. And that's pretty much all you do to prep your nectarines. We're gonna pop them on the grill, bring them back, toss with the blue cheese, some pine nuts and basil, and again, some molasses or honey. So good. All right, time to get our grill on. Awesome. First, I'm going to do the steaks and get those going. Again, screaming hot grill. Awesome. And throw these babies on. This grill's probably at a temperature of about 450. And there we go. We want to get it over the charcoal as best as we can and build that awesome flavor. Okay, so a couple of things when you're marinating steak. Number one, take it out of the fridge, let it get to room temperature. You don't want to throw a cold steak on a hot grill. It's going to seize up, get tense, and we just spent time marinating the steak to tenderize it. Number two, pat it dry. You put a wet steak on a hot grill, it's going to steam instead of sear, and it's not going to look beautiful. It's not going to be Instagram worthy, and God knows we want our Instagram social media pictures. Really? Oh, do you like my grill? It's fancy, right? Um, this is actually the 4K charcoal grill um, and smoker, by the way, smoker too, by a company called Everdur. This is awesome because it's a game changer for me. I had not grilled in a long time, especially over charcoal, because I get so scared about igniting the grill. This has one touch ignition right here, power button. Press of a button. It starts itself, it's awesome. I also love the fact that the screen is all LED. So right now, because I opened up the grill to put the steaks on, the temperature dropped a little bit. I can monitor. Also inside are internal temperature probes. You don't need a separate thermometer. So when you're cooking meat with the lid closed, it has a probe that will send you all the information about the internal temperature of the food to your phone via Bluetooth. Oh yeah, modern technology, but at the best, I mean, fashion colors. You know, a lot of women pine for and pay a lot of money for gifts that come in little blue boxes, right? You know what company I'm talking about. This is my Brian Big Blue Box, giving me smoky, wonderful, like just charcoal tasting meat that I can do direct grilling fast, I can do low and small, slow, and I can smoke too. So. I don't know, it's better than she's in a handbag in my, in my book. This is the girl that's totally gonna have your neighbors jealous. By the way, it comes in other colors too, like orange and black and white and, oh, hi, mom. Yeah, he's probably checking out my grill. Okay, let's check it out. Woo, steaks are done. Tongues please, my friends. By the way, I know it's the perfect temperature. I'm taking this off at 125 degrees because we're gonna let these steaks rest for a little bit to come up to the perfect medium rare of around 130 degrees. This is the fruit. Um, we're gonna do this over a medium high heat, get nice grill marks till both the nectarines for the salad and the pine
pineapple for the sangria get caramelized and a nice golden brown. It shouldn't take long if you have a nice hot grill. Uh, maybe just a couple minutes each side. All right, so now we're gonna just tent this really loosely with foil so the steak rests and finish cooking. And now that our fruit has cooled, the nectarines, I'm gonna go ahead and take these halves and cut them into wedges only because it's a little bit easier to eat when you have um, mm, Beautiful, okay. So I am just build usually the salad on everybody's plate individually, but if you wanted to, you could easily throw this into a bowl and just mix everything all together, especially if you're having a, a lot of people over, um, and then that way they can help themselves. Go ahead and do that. All right, take the blue cheese that we crumbled, Put that over top. And obviously, if you like cheese, you're gonna use a lot. And if you don't, you're gonna use a little, or maybe none at all. And you could do goat cheese with this, and it's absolutely fantastic. All right, a few of the pine nuts. Now with pine nuts, I go the extra mile and I toast them. So you just throw them into a dry, small skillet over medium heat until they get a little bit golden brown. Okay, we do a little bit of our basil that we julienne. Isn't it pretty? So good. And I like having something like this as a side dish with steak as opposed to uh, potatoes, especially in um, the summertime, because sometimes meat and potatoes can be really heavy when it's super hot, and that's what it's been today. Now this is just pomegranate magras uh, pomegranate magrasses, pomegranate molasses that I bought at the store. Um, if you can't find this, just drizzle a little bit of honey. And that's pretty much how you do a nectarine or peach blue cheese salad. Um, so now, let's get our steak and go to town. All right. So again, very impressive meal, but really, really easy. You're never gonna have dried out beef because you made the marinade. You used a ribeye, it's super marled, so all of that just melted into a buttery flavor and it's absolutely Fantastic. Okay. Ooh, cooked perfectly. Look at that. Medium rare. Nice and pink. Loving it. Mmm. Really good. Excuse the dance moves. I know it's been a while. All right, so we have our grilled pineapple that we did. Um, a few minutes ago, nice and cooled. You're gonna take the rings and all you have to do is cut them up into nice little chunks. So sangria is basically three things, red wine, fresh fruit, and brandy. Now obviously there's tons of variations like we're gonna do today. I'm gonna do it with white wine. Um, and you get to pick the fruit of your choice. Uh, we were grilling, so I love the grilled pineapple. It just gives it a more, um, I don't know, interesting flavor, a little bit of smokiness and almost brown sugary from the caramelization. And then the fruit that I picked, my favorites, strawberries and blueberries. I mean, it's June, July, it's July. I don't even know what time of month it is, but I know that fresh blueberries and strawberries are at their peak. So that's what we're gonna use. And of course, I add lime to almost every cocktail. So you're gonna need a big picture. And the first thing you wanna do is just scoop up, throw your pineapple in, and then we're gonna add all of our fruits and then we'll build the liquid base, okay? So in the strawberries go. Now instead of adding ice to the pitcher, if you want a really cold drink, um, even after you refrigerate this, you'll just add ice to individual glasses. Okay, so here's the brandy. So for the brandy, we have about two cups, and I choose blackberry brandy, again, just because of the fruitiness. You're going to take your favorite red wine, in this case, a Sauvignon Blanc. I happen to like that. I'm gonna pour that in. Now this, after we get everything in, we definitely wanna throw it into the refrigerator for at least four hours, because you want all of these flavors to blend together. Um, some people do this a day ahead, totally fine. Don't do it a week ahead. The problem is if the fruit sits there and kind of um, interacts too long, it's gonna start getting a bitter flavor and nobody wants that. 
Uh, definitely your Moscato. This is a sparkling Moscato. It's really gonna give, give that effervescence. If you can't find this and you just wanna top your sangria off with some sparkling water, totally do that. Um, it's just as good. But um, if anybody knows me, I'm kind of, I like, I like my alcohol in my cocktails, so. Thank you. I was like, I'm, why are you leaving me here on an island? And then finally, um, what I like to do is just a couple of lime slices. Okay. Again, in the fridge, at least four hours to blend, to get cold, or do this just a couple of days in advance. Who's ready for a drink? <laughs> Isn't it pretty? Um, Karen, who's been helping me in the kitchen, said it looks like a fruit lava lamp, and I have to totally agree. Okay, so I went ahead and added ice to our glasses. And so the thing with this is you want some fruit in your glass, so just take um, a salted spoon, add some of the fruit first. You don't want to pour it from the pitcher. Um, this has a lid, but it can be slow. If you don't have a lid, then you're looking at a hot mess. And then just dig down, get some of that grilled pineapple. I'll tell you what, your guests, if you're serving this at a backyard barbecue, are gonna be floored when they realize you went the extra mile and that you grilled this. They're gonna be like, wow, she really does like us. Yeah. Pour a little bit. Mm. Noelle and Karen are getting these. Okay, you're welcome. Girls, ladies first. Ladies first, gentlemen. I didn't say you weren't gonna get one. I just said you're not gonna be first on the list. Okay, and a little lime wedge for garnish. So there you have it, a great grilled steak, an awesome sweet and savory fruit salad, and the perfect summer drink to toast this season. If you'd love to see these recipes and even want to find about special offers from some of the brands that you see in these videos, check me out on my social media, Savor It With Stacy on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and my website, savoritwithstacy.com. Cheers.